Next Chapter Podcasts presents the Play On Podcast series, King Lear. Episode 5, Is Man No More Than This? For the best listening experience, be sure to use headphones or earbuds. Just look with your ears. and hurricanes spout till you have drenched our steeples, drowned our weathercocks. You sulfurous and thought-executing fires, vaunt couriers to oak-cleaving thunderbolts, singe my white head, and you all shaking thunder, strike flat the thick rotundity of the world, crack nature's moles spilling spores and seeds that grow ungrateful man. Come inside, Uncle. Having to flatter in a dry house is better than getting soaked out here. Swallow your pride and let's go in and ask for your daughter's blessing. This night won't spare the wise man nor the fool. Storm! Rumble thy bellyful. Spit fire. Spout rain. Oh, rain, wind, thunder, fire are not my daughters. I tax you not, you elements, with unkindness. I never gave you a kingdom, called you my children. You owe me no subscription. Let your horrible pleasures run free. Here I stand, your slave, a poor, infirm, weak, and despised old man. But I can still accuse you of joining forces with two pernicious daughters and using your heavenly powers to strike my old white head. Oh, tis foul. The one with the roof over his head has the best hat. But if a man finds housing for his privates before he finds housing for his head, he'll end up poor and infected with lice. This is how whores have married themselves to men. The man who values his toe more than his heart will always have corns to complain about. No. I will be a perfect example of patience. I will say nothing. The king! King Lear! Who's there? Alas, sir, are you here? Even things that love the night don't love nights like these. The angry skies terrify the beast of the dark and make them stay in their caves. Let the great gods that have stirred up this commotion in the skies find and crush their enemies now. Anyone who has secret crimes within them, which have gone unpunished, should tremble. Hide your bloody hands, you perjurer. And you, the same type who was incestuous. You wretch, cleanse yourself. You, who with secret and silky hypocrisy have plotted against a man's life. May your secret guilt burst through your disguise and make you beg these dreadful judges for mercy. I am a man who is more sinned against than sinning. Dear me, you are bareheaded. Why not a hat or a hood? My gracious lord, there is a shack nearby. It will give you some protection against the storm. You rest there while I go to the heartless houses of your daughters, whose hearts are worth less than the stones the house is made of. My wits are beginning to turn. Come, my boy. Are you cold? I'm cold myself. Where is this place, my fellow? Necessity is a strange master, which makes vile things valuable. Come on. Show me your shack. Poor fool. One part of my heart still feels for you. Even the man who has a little wit. Sing hey, ho, the wind and the rain must be content with whatever he gets. For the rain, it raineth every day. Tis fortune's fit. That's true, my good boy. Come on. Bring us to this shack. Oh, this way, my lord. Ah. Oh. Here, here. Uh, 
you must be chilly. I'll warn you with a prophecy before I go, and go I must. When priests don't practice what they preach, when brewers dilute their ale with water, when noblemen follow fashion more closely than their tailors, when the only heretics being burned are faithless lovers who itch with venereal disease, then the kingdom of England will come to its ruin. And when every court case is just, when no servants or knights are in debt, when tongues refrain to slander each other and pickpockets tie their hands from stealing from crowds, when moneylenders have not a dime to hide and hustlers and sluts build churches, then those who live to see that day will stroll about free and easy to make up their own mind. But since this is not that day, and because this prediction belongs to Merlin the Magician, I'll let him tell it, since I was born before his time. Oh, alas, alas, Edmund, I don't like this unnatural behavior. When I asked the Duke and Duchess of Cornwall if I could help the king and give him shelter, they took command of my own house, charged me on pain of perpetual displeasure neither to speak of him, entreat him, or in any way sustain him? Father, that is most savage and unnatural. Be careful, say nothing about this, but there is a division between the two dukes and there's worse news than that. I received a letter tonight. It's dangerous to discuss. I've locked the letter in my bedroom. The injuries done to the king will be thoroughly avenged. Armed forces have already landed. You go and talk to the duke so he won't perceive my charity. If he asks for me, say that I am ill and have gone to bed, even if I must die for it. As they've threatened me, I must help the king, my old master. There is something strange coming, Edmund. Please be careful. The Duke shall know about my father's forbidden kindness to the King, and about that letter, too. Mm, who knew betraying my father would reap so many rewards? <laughs> it will win me everything that my father will lose, and I want it all. The young will rise when the old ones fall. My lord, please enter! Go in yourself. Make yourself comfortable. This tempest stops me from thinking thoughts that are more painful. But, uh, but I'll go in. My boy, you go first. Poor naked paupers, wherever you are. You are suffering the pelting of this pitiless storm with no roof over your heads. No fat on your ribs and only rags for clothes. How will you defend yourselves against such weather? Oh, when I was king, I should have done more for you. It would do you good, men who live in luxury, to walk in the shoes of the downtrodden, so that you can unburden yourselves with wealth you hardly need, and show the world that heaven can be fair. Nine feet deep is the water rising from my feet. Poor Tom. Don't come in, Uncle. There is a ghost. Ooh, give me a hand. Who's there? A ghost. A ghost who says his name's poor Tom. Who are you grumbling there in the straw? Come out. Wait. The foul fiend follows me. The cold wind blows to the sharp hawthorn trees. <laughs> Go to your cold bed and warm yourself up. Have you given everything to your two daughters, Tom, and ended up like this? Who gives anything to poor Tom? The devil has led him through fire and through flame, through rivers and whirlpools, over bogs and swamps. The devil puts up quite an effort to get poor Tom to kill himself. <laughs> Bless your five senses. Tom's is a cold. <laughs> His daughters must have reduced him to this state. Couldn't you have saved anything, Tom? 
Did you give those daughters everything? No, he reserved a blanket for himself or else he'd be naked and we'd be ashamed to look at him. Then may all the plagues that hang in the air waiting to punish men crash down on your daughters. <laughs> he had no daughters, sir. No? You're a traitor for saying that. Look at this man! Nothing could have degraded him like this except for unkind daughters. <laughs> Unless this is the current trend that the bodies of neglected fathers should get so little pity. It's a fitting punishment. Because it was from my body that I fathered those blood-sucking cannibals I call children. <sighs> Peter Pepper sat on Peppercock This cold night will turn us all into fools and madmen. I'm so cold. What were you? A suitor, proud in heart and mind. I curled my hair, carried tokens of my lovers in my cap, satisfied the lust of my mistress' heart by laying with her for more than sleep. I had a false heart. I listened to and passed on my fair share of gossip. I had blood on my hands. I was as lazy as a sloth. Cunning like a fox, greedy as a wolf, as mad as a dog. Here's what being an animal taught me. Don't let women walk on your heart with creaking shoes or tickle you silly with their rustling silks. Stay out of debt and defy the devil. The cold wind still blows through the hawthorn tree, saying some <laughs> The devil, my boy, my boy. Stop that! Stop that! Let him trot on by. <laughs> You would be better off in the grave than exposing your uncovered body to the extremes of the weather. Is man no more than this? Look at him, carefully. You owe the worm no silk, the beast no hide, the sheep no wool, or the rose no perfume. <gasps> you are the genuine article. A man without the trappings of civilization is a poor... Naked creature like you. Off! Off with my clothing! Come! Let me undo these buttons! Please, no, no. Uncle, be oh, easy. This is a bad night for swimming. On a night like this, a little fire in a barren field would be like an old lecher's heart. A small spark in a cold body. Here? Your Highness? Look, here comes a walking flame. That is the foul fiend, Flipperty Gibbet. He wakes at nightfall and walks about till midnight. Don't look him in the eyes. He gives people cataracts and hair lips. How goes, your grace? Who's there? What is it that you seek? Tis I, sir. Well, Foster. Indeed. And who's this fellow? Poor Tom. The one who eats the swimming frog, the toad, the tadpole, the water newt, and the lizard, who, in his madness when the devil rages, eats cow dung instead of salad. <laughs> Tom is whipped from parish to parish, put in stocks and punished. He once had three suits and six shirts to wear, a ride and a weapon to carry, but now mice and rats and deer have been Tom's food for seven long years. Is this the best company you gentlemen can get? The devil is a gentleman. Our flesh and blood, my lord, is grown so vile that they hate the parents who made them. Poor Tom's cold. Come back to my house. Your daughters have commanded me to lock my doors and let this terrible night descend upon you. But I have decided to come and find you and bring you to where there is both food and fire. Let me first talk to this philosopher. What is the cause of thunder? Oh. My good lord, take him up on his offer and go back to his house. First... I'll have a word with this learned man. What is your specialty? Uh, how to resist the devil and kill rats. Splendid! Let me have a word with you in private. My lord, plead with him again to go in, my lord. He's beginning to go mad. Can you blame him? His daughters want him dead. Ah, oh, good Kent. She predicted that it would be like this poor banished woman. You say he is going mad, I tell you, my friend. I almost am mad myself. I had a son, but now I disowned him. He tried to kill me, recently, very recently. I loved him, friend. No father ever loved his son more than I did. To tell you the truth, the grief has almost made me crazy. What night this is. Please, your grace! Oh, cry mercy, sir. Noble philosopher, speak with me. Tom's cold. Then 
Go in, fellow, there, into the shed. Keep yourself warm. Let's all go in. No, this way, my lord. I'll go with him. Oh, but sir... I want to keep with my philosopher. My lord, let's humor him. Let him take the fellow. Bring him with you, then. I will have my revenge before I depart his house. I worry, my lord, how I may be censured for letting my loyalty to you overcome my natural bond to my father. I can see now that it was not just your brother's evil nature that made him want to kill your father. Gloucester deserves it. You are right. How malicious is my fortune that I must feel bad about doing the right thing. This is the letter he spoke of, which proves him to be a spy for France. I only wish this treason did not exist, or that I was not the one who discovered it. Ugh. Come with me to the Duchess. If the contents of this letter are true, then you have a lot to contend with. Yes, but true or false, this letter has made you Earl of Gloucester. Find out where your father is, so we can have him arrested at once. If I find him assisting the king, it'll make him even more suspicious. I will continue my loyal efforts, even though it is almost tearing me apart. And I will put my trust in you. For you will find a better father in me. You're better off here in my basement than in the open air. Be grateful for it. I will bring what I can to make it more comfortable. Hmm. I will not be gone long. All his sense is giving way to his impatience. May the gods reward you for your kindness. Pray, you innocent, and beware the devil. Please, Uncle, tell me whether this madman be a gentleman or a commoner. A king! He's a king, like me! No, he's a commoner who has a gentleman as his fool. Have you ever heard of something so ridiculous? A commoner would have to be mad to let his fool become a gentleman before he does. May a thousand hissing devils strike those daughters of mine with their red burning pitchforks. I will do it. I will put my daughters on trial here. Come, come thou here, most excellent judge. Who, me? And you, you wise sir, sit here. Now, you vixens. Look how the devil stands and glares. The devil haunts poor Tom with the voice of a nightingale. How are you, sir? Uh, try not to stand there dumbfounded. Uh, uh, will you lie down and rest upon these cushions? Uh, I'll see their trial first. Bring in the evidence. You, robed judge, take your place. And you, his partner in justice, sit by his side. Uh, you, you be a judge as well. Uh, sit down, too. Let us act with justice. Are you awake or asleep, Johnny Shepherd? Your sheep are in the cornfield. And for just one song from you, your sheep will come to no harm. Well, the cat is a great devil. Let's charge Goneril first. Here she is. <laughs> I swear before this honorable assembly that she kicked her father, the poor king. Come here, lady. Is your name Goneril? She cannot deny it. I beg your pardon. I thought you were a footstool. Uh, and, and, and here's another one. His twisted face shows what she has in her heart. Stop her there! <laughs> arms! Arms! Sword! Fire! Oh, there is corruption here! False judge! Why have you let her escape? The gods uh, cross your good senses! Uh, I pity you, sir! Sir, uh, where is the patience now that you used to be so proud of keeping? If I begin to cry for him, it'll give away my disguise. Sick the dogs, old Regan! See what breathes about her heart! You, sir, I welcome you as one of my knights. Only... I don't like your garments. You will probably say it's today's fashion, but change them anyway. Now, 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 my lord, lie here and rest a while. So we'll, we'll go to supper in the morning. And I'll go to bed at noon. Where is my master the king? Here, sir, but do not trouble him. He's lost his mind. Please, good friend, pick him up in your arms. I have overheard a plot to kill him. I have a carriage ready. Put him in it and drive towards Dover, friend, where you shall find both welcome and protection. 
Pick up your master! If you delay half an hour, his life and yours will certainly be lost. Pick him up! Pick him up! And follow me. I will take you quickly to the things I have ready. His troubled soul sleeps. <clears throat> this rest still might have healed his damaged mind, which if it hasn't now will be almost impossible to cure. Come, fool! Help carry your master. You must not stay behind. Oh, come on. Come on, let's go. When we see our betters bearing our woes, our miseries no longer seem our foes. Who suffers alone suffers in the mind. All thoughts of freedom and joy are left behind. But then the mind much sufferance does skip when grief has bedfellows, it bears fellowship. How light and portable my pain seems now, when that which makes me bend makes the king bow. He's a child, as I'm now a cruel father. Tom, away. Look toward the great events ahead. Throw off your disguise. When those who think wrongly of you can see the real evidence, repeal your sentence and reconcile you with your father. Whatever else happens tonight, may it end happily thereafter. The play on podcast series King Lear was translated into modern English verse by Marcus Gardley and directed by Eric Ting. The cast is as follows. Keith David as King Lear. Bernard White as the Earl of Gloucester. Aldo Billingsley as the Fool. Christiana Clark as the Earl of Kent. Gina Daniels as Goneril. Francesca Fernandez McKenzie as Cordelia. Lance Gardner as Oswald and the King of France. Daniel Jose Molina as Edgar and the Duke of Burgundy. J.D. Mollison as the Duke of Albany and the Doctor. Tramel Tillman as Edmund. Amy Kimwashki as Regan. Rex Young as the Duke of Cornwall. Casting by the Telsey Office, Karen Castle, CSA, and Ada Karamanian. Voice and text coach, Rebecca Clark Carey. Episode scripts were adapted and produced by Marcus Gardley and Catherine Eaton. Original music, sound design, and sound mix by Lindsay Jones. Sound engineering by Sadaharu Yagi. Additional engineering by Daniel Ben Shimon. Mix engineer and dialogue editor, Larry Walsh. Podcast mastering by Greg Cortez at New Monkey Studio. Line producer, Jordan Moore. Managing producer, Robert Cappadona. Senior producer, Miriam Lauba. Executive producer, Michael Goodfriend. The senior manager of business operations and partnerships at Next Chapter Podcast is Sally Cade Holmes. The Play On Podcast series, King Lear, is produced by Next Chapter Podcasts and is made possible by the generous support of the Hits Foundation. Visit ncpodcasts.com for more about the Play On podcast series. Visit playonshakespeare.org for more about Play On Shakespeare. Hear more about the Play On Shakespeare podcast series by listening to bonus content at ncpodcasts.com, where you'll find interviews with the artists, producers, and engineers who brought it all to life. And remember, anyone can see how this world works. Just look with your ears. Mm -hmm.